Currently I'm using this nearly 7 years old machine for gaming or for home server purposes. You can get these type of computers for around 60 or 90 euros on eBay or Facebook marketplaces. I bought two of these computers, one Dell Optiplex 5050 and one Lenovo ThinkCentra for just 120 euros. The Dell computer is an Optiplex 5050 tower version and the Lenovo is the ThinkCentra M920T. I really like the size of both. The case is not as big as the regular M80X or ATX case. Also, I honestly like the design of both computers. It's just clean and the upgrade possibilities are there, but more on that later. It's quite suitable for a small home server where you just want to do a few things or such as gaming, media data, cloud home server or as a Batocera emulation station. Basically, these PCs are office computers and designed for typical office application use. You can, of course, also take compatible computers from Fujitsu or HP. All these brands and models are about the same level. In everyday life, such as surfing, the internet, texting or watching YouTube content like this video, these computers are really quick and responsive. Accessing documents or data sometimes feels really fast. You might think there's a high-end gaming PC behind it, but which is of course not. Both computers came with an Intel i5-7500. The CPU isn't the best, but perfectly adequate for everyday use and some games, especially if you want to play in 1080p. The CPU has 4 cores with 4 threads and a turbo load of 3.8 GHz with a TDP of 65 watts, and was released in 2017. The CPU supports Intel VTX and VTD, which helps with IO MMU support under Proxmox or other hypervisors. I was lucky because the Dell computer already had two 8GB DDR4 RAM installed. The Lenovo came with 8, but in this video I only focus on the Dell computer and just wanted to show you that there are compatible computers from other manufacturers. Lucky number 2, the computer came with a 256GB SSD providing a good foundation for all uses. Furthermore, the motherboard offers many upgrade options for RAM slots, an M2 NVMe slot, multiple SATA ports for attaching multiple hard drives or a drive, two PCIe slots with 16 lanes, and yes, there is a Wi-Fi connection on the motherboard, but this is really strange. The Wi-Fi connection on the motherboard, for which I couldn't find any particularly helpful information online, is there but not useful because Dell doesn't offer any part for this connection. The power supply is a 240 watt power supply with an 80 plus bronze certification. And the technical datasheet of the Optiplex 5050 series state that the part can also be operated with an Intel i7, for example a 7700, but this upgrade wouldn't be economical for my use because the Intel i7 7th gen is currently just too expensive. And yes, it is still a good CPU. Additionally, there are several USB ports on the front and at the back, as well as two display port connections and a network connection. For gaming, a relatively good graphics card is necessary. There are several options available, but you should pay attention to the TDP of the graphics card and probably avoid a PCI power connector, because you're risking a fire. This time I opted for the Nvidia Tesla P4 with 8GB, as I ordered this card for testing from eBay for about 72 euros from China. In terms of performance, it's like to be on par with an GTX 1060 or RX 580. Additionally, with a TDP rating of 75 watts, it is extremely power efficient and compact. Unfortunately, it does not come with a cooler by default, as the card is primarily intended for server use. However, 
This issue can be solved with a few cable ties and two fans. Other alternatives are the GTX 1050 Ti or an AMD RX 560 for around 50 bucks, sometimes on eBay or Facebook marketplaces. But there is one thing if you use an NVIDIA Tesla card. To utilize the NVIDIA Tesla card for gaming, you need to enable VTX in the BIOS settings and set the iGPU as the primary video output. There are several guides on Reddit or on Google how you can use your NVIDIA Tesla card for gaming. But the Reddit guide were not quite suitable for me. But the grid drivers worked really well. After a simple installation, they run straight out of the box, automatically activating and utilizing the NVIDIA Tesla for gaming and other applications. Feel free to check out the Reddit link again and if you have any tips for me, please write them in the comments. Additionally, an ASUS 10GBE Ethernet card, the XG100C, is being used, which I have had lying around at home for several years and has always provided faithful services for me. For use as a home server, this is of course a good choice provided you have a 10GBE home network. For gaming, a 256GB SATA SSD and a 2TB HDD are being used. The 250GB SSD from Fiaxiang is available on Amazon for around 20 or 25 bucks. And the 2TB HDD can be found used or second hand on Facebook marketplaces or eBay for a low price. But I use the SSD which comes with the PC. For server use I opted two 1TB Crucial SATA SSDs with a 3D printed caddy as only one was included with the device. These SSDs were also purchased on eBay for an affordable price. If you are using an HDD in your server, I recommend installing an SSD as a cache. Furthermore, there is still space for a Wi-Fi Bluetooth PCIe card. I had planned to do this as well, but unfortunately my AliExpress delivery had not arrived at the time of writing this script. Last but not least, upgrading the fans? Not necessary. I feel really comfortable with the stock coolers and they are doing a pretty good job here. How does the PC perform in benchmarks and what does the computer delivery in gaming? Let's begin with the benchmarks. As I already mentioned, I'm using the Nvidia P4 Tesla graphics card with 8GB and the graphics or the graphic card becomes really hot, around 19 degrees. But with some coolers you can get this problem away. I'm going to skip this step for the benchmarks because I don't want to go into much detail. On the next slide all the benchmarks results are summarized again. Actually the results from the benchmarks are really not bad. The best option is to pause the video and take a quick look at the table. But hey! For 150 bucks, it's pretty cool and impressive, or? And now to the gaming performance. Apex Legends on high graphics works really good. Average FPS around 70 or 80 FPS. PUBG on ultra graphics approximately around 45 to 50 FPS, but on high graphics around 55 to 60 FPS. But sometimes I noticed a little minor stuttering maybe due to the HDD or large map which requiring more loading? Now to Star Wars Battlefront 2 and this game run really smooth on ultra graphic settings around 70 and 19 FPS. Battlefield 5 run at maximum graphic settings with an average about 16 to 17 FPS but the CPU acted as a bottleneck, maybe. Battlefield 2042 started with an initial black screen, but after some patience it launched. Graphic settings too low and the gaming experience wasn't that good. Approximately around 40 to 45 FPS with a little drops. 
Now let's go to the really interesting part, which is using the PC as a home server. To utilize a PC as a home server, it is essential that the motherboard provides good upgrade options. In my case, this involves a GPU, a 10 gigabit Ethernet card and the installation of HDDs, ideally with an NVMe for caching purposes. The Intel technology VTD should be available, ideally along with an IOMMU function to pass certain hardware components into the virtual machine within VM environment. Currently I'm using Unraid and Proxmox on my home server. Of course, you can use TrueNAS or OpenMedia Vault for network data transfer. Both options offer good services. Unfortunately, I can't tell you which one is suitable for you. But if you want to quickly test, a hypervisor like Proxmox is worth considering. There, you can create virtual machines on OpenMedia Vault or TrueNAS and experiment there. There is, of course, the option to install different applications on it, such as Home Assistant, a Plex Media Server or other ones. Operating Plex with an NVIDIA Tesla P4 should not be a problem, although I haven't tested myself. What I have tested, however, is the Maker MKV Docker container and it runs really smoothly, just like PhotoPrism and setting up virtual machines with this graphics card. The copying of data is extremely fast and nothing freezes over a SMB connection. The 10 GBE network card is also recognized directly by Unraid and performs well. I highly recommend that as long as you use Unraid, you install the apps Stat Settings, System Tab and TurboWrite to get better overview of performance and temperatures. And the last aspect is not necessary. Regarding power consumption. I can say that the computer draws between 14 and 20 watts at idle, which is surprisingly good and that was what I was looking for. And now quickly to the costs. I paid effectively 60 bucks for the computer, 72 for the Nvidia Tesla graphics card, 22 euros for the SATA SSD, 20 bucks for the 2TB HDD and you can estimate 50 bucks for the 10 GBE network card and maybe 5 to 10 euros for the Wi-Fi Bluetooth module. I will link all the items again in the video description below if you are interested. And that's it. I apologize for my bad English skills, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Follow for more content and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Please let me know what you want to see next.